Hi everyone. Welcome to the new episode of Ecom 365. I'm co-founder and CEO of shopagain.io. In Ecom 365, we try to answer the challenges that e-commerce businesses and marketers face in their daily life. For this episode, I have a new guest with me, Eric. Eric is a seasoned email marketer and owner of mailforecom.com. Eric has driven over 3 million revenue for his clients in 2021 alone. Thank you for joining us. How long have you been in email marketing for e-commerce business? I have been in e-commerce since 2014, actually specifically focusing on email in the past year since I helped scale an e-commerce business holistically and found a lot of success with their email list in particular so I started honing on that this past year you mentioned you have driven over 3 million uh, revenue last year for a client so that brings one question in my mind is email marketing this effective yes absolutely anybody who tries to tell you that email is dead is an email marketer trying to sell you on email services <laughs> nobody i know has actually said that in full seriousness email has never been dead and it is just as effective if not more effective okay that helps one thing more i see is as i speak to more people quite a few brands say we've tried email marketing it didn't work for us so what do you think those brands are doing wrong where can they get better oh that's a big question if somebody's doing email marketing wrong there is a bigger problem in their business than how they're doing emails email marketing can be as simple as sending one two three emails a week but it is as complicated as restructuring your whole business and offerings so that those emails are actually effective would you mind elaborating one or two specific examples where you see businesses often making mistakes with their email marketing yeah so business is in let's say the pet supplement space or pet food space and they are not being specific enough with their offerings and they send out um generic emails that's a big problem nobody really wants to get a generic email in their inbox it's think of it as the ab pile of direct mail where you're going through your mail and you see something that comes off as marketing and you immediately throw it in the trash specifically brands that make mistakes with email marketing are in my opinion the biggest one is sending discount codes every time you send an email all that does is simply devalue your brand and make your customer expect discounts in every email when in reality email marketing should be like a lot of other channels a relationship building platform yeah. to you made two great points eric here first end of the day sending emails is marketing but still sending emails which don't feel like marketing that's point number 1 and second offering discount to your customer is is a tool in your arsenal so use it more carefully don't just throw out discount everywhere in all your emails because that way you devaluate your brand as well so yes. so for example i have a client in the in the confectionery space so they sell treats but for the past year they've sent maybe one to i would say one to three emails a month and every single one has been a percentage off code so i'm having a lot of trouble with their list and sending value based emails or informational emails that make any sales at all because yeah. people are opening those expecting some percentage off some discount yeah. that makes a lot of sense at this point i want to pick one email series and get more detailed into that and let's say abandoned cart series is something everybody every business e-commerce should be using so do you want to elaborate more on that and you know what is the right strategy to recover abandoned carts how many emails to send when to stop so i'll give you an example of somebody i am looking to onboard right now i went through their email system their series i signed up i went through their website and i got halfway through on purpose i got to their checkout and then i closed and waited to see what would happen and i waited and i waited and nothing happened and finally this morning when i'm driving my kids to school i get an abandoned cart email in the car that's the wrong way to do abandoned cart because now my mind is completely moved on i've moved on of my life i have forgotten about the brand as a consumer an abandoned cart email should hit 
when the brand and the desire to buy is still top of mind within an hour, yeah, maybe a half hour, and it should be direct into the uh, benefit to open subject line that's straight to the point. Hey, you forgot something. We'd love to get you back. Here's 10% off. And that should be right at the top of the email. No fluff, getting right to it, trying to get that action to be taken right away. That, that's a great point for the first abandoned cart email that uh, you are trying to close the deal when the intent is already high. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to sound salesy and be very direct about it because uh, the customer is already in the mood of making the purchase. And you don't have to be very creative with the subject line at that point in time. When do you suggest the next abandoned card email could go and what could be the strategy around it? The next one, so if you did a three series abandoned cart, which is a nice standard, not being too over the top, but a few hours afterwards, just because it's still on their mind, they'll remember that they're shopping or they're on your site. You might be able to get a little more creative with your subject line, maybe a little less direct, but still you want to let them know that you want their business and you've got a deal for them if you they come back in the door. And if you did a third one, I'd probably recommend the next day just to give them some time to breathe and for them to think about it. Do you like to add any other content to these abandoned cart emails in addition to showing people the product they have left behind? Most things are, are worth split testing, but in, as a general rule of thumb, one message, one action that you want them to take. Don't try to distract with other options in the email that's just going to allow their brain to become more scattered and overwhelmed and eventually probably just leave and go back to their inbox or go back to social media. You want to try to keep it a simple message throughout, simple subject line, hook, offer, click without much fluff or distractions. But it's always worth a split test to try to put a cross sell or some related item at the bottom. I have seen abandoned card emails from brands, which are, you know, five pages long, beautifully designed, but so much of content that you really lose the point. So that comes back to what you mentioned. I, I think I completely agree with uh, what you suggested. Yeah. It's just a lot of visual noise at that point, at least to me as a consumer, that's just going to make me want to leave the email. It's just overwhelming. I've got other things in my mind. How do you judge an email campaign? For example, abandoned cart email, right? You can judge the success of abandoned cart campaign by the revenue it generated because the sole focus is to recover carts, generate the revenue. But if you're sending some educational content to your audience in a campaign and you're trying to send them interesting content to engage with, how would you measure if that campaign was a success or not? My goal is to generate a lot of replies because one that helps your domain that helps your reputation with the email system gmail yahoo whatever to have people replying back to you so i i would measure the success i don't have a percentage of if i send to a thousand recipients i want at least 10 replies for example so one thing i want to point out for our viewers which eric very simply uh, slide through inviting your customers, your audience to respond back to your emails is extremely powerful. Very few marketers actually use it. But as Eric said, this could be really powerful because the ones who are replying back to you are surely engaged with your brands, with your product, and you could build content with them further going forward for future emails as well. So that's a great campaign idea too. Yes. Thank, thanks for pointing that out because I actually use that a lot to fast track market research. Instead of going and assuming what an audience would want to get in their inbox, just ask them. Like they've bought from you, ask them what they might be interested in getting emails about. They might say, I don't want to get any emails. And that's okay. Let them unsubscribe. That's un having an unsubscribe is probably the healthier thing that can happen yes. to your email list versus the worst thing. I've worked with brands that are terrified of offending their customers and bothering them too much by sending them too many emails and that they'll unsubscribe, let them unsubscribe. That's their choice. It's only your turn to have their attention. They want to move on. It's somebody else's turn. One more point that Eric made, and I want to you know make it very clear to people, those who are unsubscribing to your emails, be thankful to them. They are doing a favor to you. 
because <laughs> if they don't touch your emails or mark them as a spam or just let them die there they are hurting your uh, domain reputation and by unsubscribing they are actually doing a favor to you so don't be shy of that you want to keep more engaged audience and let go of the ones who are not interested in you thanks a lot for taking the time to speak to us eric this was a wonderful conversation we learned a lot of healthy practices about email marketing thank you for watching the show the show was sponsored by shopagain.io an ai powered customer retention platform thank you